I want to talk about Tyree Simpson. And first, I want to say that I understand the response of a lot of the Ipswich fans that I've seen either in my mentions or just generally tweeting amongst themselves. It's an emotional response. It's a normal response. <laughs> Ipswich fans care about their club and anything that negatively impacts their club or goes against their club is something that very naturally, that's a subconscious bias, they are going to think a certain way about. So I understand why. They would laugh at me suggesting Tyree Simpson might be bought by a club in a higher division than Ipswich Town because what's he done? He's only scored nine career goals in the league and they were in League Two. He's not shown anything yet to suggest that he could play at a higher level than League One. I don't care about contract disputes. I don't really care who's being greedy or who's not offering as much as they could offer or who's being given or giving bad advice. I'm interested mostly in, in player development and I'm interested in recruitment. And I'm pretty confident in my opinion that Tyree Simpson, regardless of what he's done so far in half a season of professional football, will be signed by someone higher than Ipswich Town based on what he could be, not based on what he's done already. And it's quite an important thing to get past that and not, don't look at the lack of league goals in his career at this point to decide whether or not he's good enough for the level. That's not how clubs think. That's not how recruitment teams think. It's about what could they be? What are we signing them for? And what could they be? I'm not suggesting for a moment there's a championship or Premier League club who would sign Simpson to be their starting number nine next season, nor that they would offer a deal to him that would reflect that. What I do think is that Simpson has a natural physical skill set that is both next to unique in under 23 strikers in the EFL and crucially for what I'm talking about at a level of physicality that is over the minimum threshold for a Premier League or top championship striker. If you look at those who are playing up front for Premier League clubs, particularly those outside the big six, particularly those who play with one up front and even EFL top championship clubs who only play with one up front. Really here I'm talking about Mitro and Solanke, players like Gyokoresh as well. There's more or less a minimum physical capability that you have to have. I'm talking size, I'm talking speed, I'm talking strength, physicality, everything that comes under that umbrella. And Simpson has that naturally. The rumour is that he once ran 100 metres in 11.2 seconds. He could have been a professional rugby player. These things are all massive for potential. And it's why people, some people think, he has a potentially much higher ceiling than someone like Luke Jeffcott, who plays in League One, who has scored a ton more goals at a higher level than Simpson ever has, who's probably, what, 18 months older than Simpson, but frankly will never reach the level that people think Simpson could reach because he does not have the physical capabilities and you can't really develop them to the extent that you need to unless you have the sort of base layer. So for Simpson, yes, it's true that he's not the tidiest technically. Yes, it's true that he had some games for Swindon where the ball bounced off him and he couldn't make it stick. But he also showed in flashes why there will be so many people who back themselves to develop players and to develop elite level strikers who would be desperate to work with someone of his skill set. So long as he is motivated and willing to learn and develop, he has an incredibly high ceiling. That's why I find this situation fascinating. I can't think of many parallels at this moment in time off the top of my head. I cannot wait to see how it pans out. There are some people saying, well, it'll be a League Two club that he goes to. I think the fact that he's still got a year left on his contract, there will be a fee involved in this. And League Two clubs are generally not in much of a position to be paying fees these days. I see it as a championship or Premier League club who sells him a three-year dream, a pathway into their first team, and has the ability to back it up. Then it's up to Simpson and the people developing him to go through with it. I don't think he is a sure thing to be a Premier League striker, even a sure thing to be a top championship striker. But he absolutely has the raw materials to get there. And we've seen a few others develop so much in their 20s to become brilliant number nines in their late 20s in the second or even in the top tier. That's where I think Simpson can get to. And that's why I think there will be a ton of clubs interested in signing him.